Welcome to the Leadership Lounge, a place to kick back and listen as our experts dissect some of the biggest questions leaders face today. I'm Emma Coombe, a Managing Director in our London office. In today's episode, we're talking about a particularly thorny topic that's keeping the CEOs I speak to up at night. Our experts will be sharing their invaluable advice on when and how to weigh in on social issues. Today's CEOs aren't just trusted to deliver on profits, they're expected to have an informed point of view on key issues that society is grappling with. And indeed, as the Edelman Trust Barometer continues to find year on year, today business leaders are seen as the most trusted group in society, ahead of media and ahead of politicians. So with great power comes great responsibility. Society has now come to expect leaders to take a public position on an increasing number of complex issues, whether it's climate change, geopolitical flare-ups, social justice movements like Black Lives Matter, or major changes in legislation, as we've seen in last year's Supreme Court ruling in the US. But taking a stand can carry huge risks. And when is the right time to raise your head above the parapet? How can you best prepare and position your response to ensure your personal and professional reputation remains intact? What would we advise CEOs to say and not to say? It's a minefield and it can be really challenging for leaders. In this episode, I'm certain that our guests can shed some light on best practices and help you navigate a way forward that's right for you and for your business. Before we dive in, Remember to share any burning questions you want our experts to answer by emailing redefiners at russellreynolds.com. We look forward to hearing from you. So let's speak to some of our experts on this fast moving and divisive topic. First up, I'm delighted to welcome Laura Manchura, a leadership advisor in our New York office. Laura, welcome to the Leadership Lounge. We're really excited to get your perspective. What do you think are some of the benefits of taking a stand and putting your head above the parapet? There's many benefits, but it also shows a human side and authenticity to your leadership style that can ingratiate you. And so thus, one of the benefits of this is that you're showing that you care that you're showing that you recognize that there's more than just profits in order to successfully and sustainably run an organization. It shows a differentiated way of being a leader, and that can be attractive to both bringing in but also retaining talent, particularly in our next generation of talent whose motivations for joining organizations are often spearheaded by an alignment with the mission of an organization and the belief and the desire to follow a particular leader. Thank you, Laura. And I think these perspectives are critical as talent becomes increasingly sought after and employees think so hard about what an organisation stands for, as well as their own career path within a business. And actually, we found in a recent poll conducted by business.com that 75% of employees expected their employer to take a stance on social issues, showing just how important this is. But when it comes to choosing which issues to speak up on, making the right call can be incredibly challenging. We'd like to bring in Ty Wiggins, a leadership advisor in our London office and the author of The New CEO, how to start quickly and perform well in the role. Ty, welcome back to the Leadership Lounge. It's super to have you with us today. And in your opinion, how do leaders decide which public issues to take a position on? So when you think about what to talk about, again, thinking about ahead of time, what is the position that you're going to take on certain matters? What are the aspects that are really relevant to you and your business? If I classify the CEOs that I've worked with, they tend to fall into three buckets. The first is I won't comment on anything that isn't directly related to the organization. The middle one is I will talk about aspects in society that affect sort of the employees, the customers, uh, the community. One of the CEOs that I interviewed recently described her role as not a leader of an organization, but a leader of a community. So her view was that she would comment on aspects that mattered to that community. The third category are CEOs that feel very comfortable talking about all manner of things whether it's aligned with the business or aligned with them, their own sort of personal agenda. And that's where you probably get the most risk to the organisation and to the CEO themselves. 
That's really interesting, Ty. And I have to say, I would also think that your first bucket of CEOs who don't want to take a position on anything are equally at risk because with topics that gain such quick momentum, a silence is really felt quite profoundly in my experience. But would you ever advise a CEO to remain silent? Yes, and it's usually issues that really step outside of their strategic vision for their organisation, the footprint of the organisation, and matters that don't directly relate to either the employees or the community that they lead. That makes sense, Ty. And also, I think we'd all agree that it's unsustainable to talk on every social issue, especially when society is looking for more than lip service from CEOs. It makes me think of the phrase from Plato, the wise speak because they have something to say, fools speak because they have to say something. Timing your communication right for both external and internal stakeholders is key, especially when the stakes are so high. But Ty, in your view, when is the right or wrong time to talk about these issues? This is where a lot of CEOs and organisations cop a lot of flack. If you go too early, you might find yourself in a situation where the, the, the actual event changes. So a good example of people hesitating was in the recent um, events in the Middle East. People were concerned that as time went on, this situation would develop in different directions. So I had a lot of clients ring me saying, Look, this is clearly wrong, but if I speak in this way and things change, what happens? The flip side, of course, we saw with the George Floyd case. Organisations and CEOs that waited two, three, four weeks and then came out with something were seen as jumping on the bandwagon and falling into line. If you have made a decision early that this is an area of society that you will comment on, then you need to be timely. If it's not, then you need to stick to that and stay out of it. I can see, Ty, how it's incredibly complex for CEOs, and especially on situations like the Middle East, where the sentiment is likely split amongst employees. And having a voice that feels inclusive and representative of all is really hard to strike. And then the other challenge that we have is with social media, news proliferates so fast and a response is expected so quickly. And I think this compression adds a whole new layer of challenge for, for leaders today. So to speak on this point of getting the timing right, we'd like to welcome Richard Davis, a leadership advisor in Russell Reynolds' Toronto office. Richard is the author of a new book called Good Judgment, all about how to make better decisions using the science of human personality. Richard. Welcome to the Leadership Lounge. What mistakes do you see leaders making when it comes to the right time to speak out on these issues? Really, there are probably two errors that I see CEOs make. Speaking too soon and improperly using social media. When something bubbles up, a geopolitical event or domestic situation or some judicial ruling that causes social unrest, I've seen too many CEOs quickly jump on X and make a 280 character tweet Speaking out when you are emotional about something, absolutely fine. But in my view, you should avoid doing so purely out of emotions. You need to speak from the heart and the head. Take a breath, wait for sufficient facts to emerge, and speak to people who know more about the issue than you do. Then, and only then, should you craft a statement, again, speaking from the heart. It should communicate your position on the issue, why it matters to you and the company, and then what you are actually going to do as a result. And Richard, what happens if your opinion shifts on these social issues? How should you manage that? This is about really getting educated about the issue before making a statement. It's less likely that your viewpoint will shift if you take the time to really understand the social issue at hand. That also includes understanding the opposing points of view and sort of working through that. Ultimately, understanding the intricacies of social issues is, I believe, a new muscle that CEOs need to build. I think, Richard, your point around it being a new muscle is a really interesting one. And I would also add to that, as a new CEO, you cannot be expected to have a point of view on everything at your fingertips and making sure that you build some bench strength in your leadership team, find some trusted advisors who can help you create a point of view that stands and represents what your organisation wants it to is also really important. For my next question, I want to bring back Laura Mantura into the conversation. Laura, 
to be able to have a, an informed point of view on these issues, is there a trait or skill that leaders should hone, in your opinion? You've got to be a great active listener. Um, so before you're thinking about having a particular position, make sure that you've really taken into account the different perspectives of your broader stakeholder community. The other elements here is being very authentic. This isn't a straightforward thing. There will be ramifications. There will be messages, both positive and negative, to a response. And therefore, really taking a stance requires an individual and a leader to have courage. And there's a quote that I'd like to use that Phil Knight, the former CEO, quoted about an advert that they did for Colin Kaepernick. What Phil Knight mentioned here is, look, if it doesn't matter how many people hate your brand, as long as enough people love it. You can't try and go down the middle of the road. You have to take a stance on something, which is ultimately why I think this ad worked. Taking a stance in this particular environment actually knocked a share price within the first few minutes of it standing in the first few days. But actually, after a year, it had added $6 billion to the brand value of Nike. So sometimes taking a short-term stance can actually give you brand um, equity and actually augment your brand in the long term as well. Laura, you mentioned the importance of authenticity, and this is something that comes around time and time again. And actually, the Harvard Business Review found that 52% of employees thought their businesses were dishonest in terms of their attempts at being empathetic. So being authentic is critical. People will take the time to challenge and, and being able to have concrete evidence of how you're going to deliver is, is really important. I'd now like to welcome Kimberly Archer, who's a leadership advisor in Russell Reynolds, Washington, DC office. Kimberly, thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have you here to share your perspective with us. And I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic. The Edelman Trust Barometer has found this year that 69% of employees expect their CEO to address controversial issues. And that's a 9% increase on last year. And I'm sure this trend is going to continue. But polarising issues can be daunting. How can leaders get more comfortable having a point of view on this topic? And what should they consider before they speak out? Know your audience and think about your stakeholders, all of them. Shareholders, yes, but employees, suppliers, customers, and the communities and geographies in which you work. We need to think about uh, who they are and how they'll react, but we also need to engage them. They may not all agree, and in most cases they won't, um, but that stakeholder engagement is key in times like this, and that includes the board. Uh, good rule of thumb, don't blindside your board. They should be part of these discussions. Always embrace your strengths. Ask how your organization can uniquely address this problem. It's really about knowing the influence of your voice and what will that yield and what broader role will you play? Are you the lead voice or are you a voice of support? Yeah, Kimberly, I think this piece around stakeholder management is absolutely critical and taking your board with you is the right thing to do. And frankly, I often find that board directors sit on several other boards. So by using them to test your thinking, you're also going to hear best practice from other boards that they're sitting on. As Laura mentioned earlier in our conversation, courage is key when we think about speaking out with comfort on these issues. But when taking a public stance, there can also be safety in numbers. And Paul Polman, the former CEO of Unilever, found was that if at least 20% of industry players came together on a particular topic, they could reach a critical mass and begin tipping the scales. And how exciting is that when you can start to make meaningful change, working together, collaborating for good? So Kimberly, how do you build these kind of impactful stakeholder relationships as a leader? One, we know how important stakeholder relationships are, um, and that's internal stakeholders, external stakeholders. Uh, I think Paul's an incredible example of the power uh, of the public-private partnership and uh, the, the impact when the private sector joins together with social impact and the public sector around some of the world's um, 
biggest issues. Uh, I think the key to building those relationships uh, really is around bringing others along. Uh, today's companies are seen as powerful change agents, and there's a demand from the public um, for them to, to join in and really help solve some of these problems. We need the resources and innovations of business, uh, but no one can do it alone. Uh, there seems to be probably a bit more safety in numbers, too, I think, as, as the collective courage uh, com comes comes along in the C-suite. Um, really important also to just be transparent. Uh, share your advocacy efforts. Why are you doing this? Who are you working with? Uh, who are you meeting with? And what are you really doing to help affect change? I think all these things are good for your internal and external stakeholders, good for business. Um, and I think we've seen that power in the last handful of years when this comes together. Courageous leadership, uh, definitely something we're looking for in the C-suite. Kimberly, we probably couldn't say enough about how important it is to collaborate and work together on these key issues and then also to make sure that there's true lasting momentum. So what is your plan to follow this through? How are you going to work together to make sure that, that meaningful change happens? So I think that's a key thing for CEOs and leaders more broadly when they're speaking out on social issues making sure that there's a proper plan to follow through and, and drive that change. So our time in the lounge has come to an end. Here's what we've learnt in 30 seconds. Don't speak up on every social issue. Only take a stance on issues that align with your organisational and personal values. Actively listen to your stakeholders. If you know their stance on issues, you're much less likely to find yourself in hot water. Plan how you will respond to social issues early in your CEO tenure. You never know when these issues are going to bubble up. And finally, authenticity. Make sure when crafting your response that you're speaking from the heart and that you have tangible actions to follow through with. If you have any topics or burning questions you would like us to cover in future episodes of Leadership Lounge, then please do get in touch. Email your questions to redefiners at russellreynolds.com. Find us on LinkedIn. Follow us on X at RRA on Leadership. You can also find us on Instagram at Redefiners Podcast and YouTube. Until next time, goodbye.